But if you walk through the forests of Panaeva today, um, especially in the evening or at night, you're not going to hear the sounds of native birds. You're going to hear the very loud whistling of the coqui frog from Puerto Rico. And this is kind of a noise pollution. Um, you can just, you know, from the sound of, of, uh, of the forest at night that this place is no longer native and that it's lost an important component of the experience that should, be, uh, that, that should surround you when you walk through a forest of that sort. And so you will find people working very hard to try to, to, try to remove these, these frogs, um, to apply uh, different chemicals um, to the forest, chemicals that don't harm um, people or, or in general hurt the ecosystem, but are kind of deadly to these frogs. And it's because not only are these frogs threatening the, the ecological processes, that is, they're feeding on insects that the native birds should be eating, um, they're contributing to different, to changes in the ecosystems that, that we have no idea what the actual consequences might be. Um, I'm a graduate assistant at UH, University of Hawaii, and what I do is I, I, have, I do research projects for our lab, and one of the projects that I'm working on is for the koki frogs, which are the little tiny frogs that make a lot of noise. And we are trying to find a way, or we're trying to find something that kills them. So we're, we're trying to um, develop, I guess, like a pesticide to kill the koki frogs. Uh, the koki frogs, they eat insects. And since they're very small, but they eat a lot. So if they're eating a lot of insects, that means they're taking away food from other species like our native Hawaiian birds. So if um, you know, our birds are already endangered, so if we take away their food source, they're, they're, you know, they're gonna decline even faster. What's special about frogs? And one thing is that they breathe through their skin. So if you have something that breathes through your skin, well then what if you sprayed something on it? So, um, if you spray something on, some, on an animal that breathes through its skin, it's gonna go right into its system. So um, they, I believe that's where they started. And they said, okay, well, what can we spray on these frogs that you know, biochemically speaking would disrupt, disrupt them? And so um, somebody else had come up with caffeine and um, pyrethrin. So they did laboratory experiments on that. And then um, you know, th things are fine if they work in the lab, but how can that help the people? Uh, you know, people here in the Big Island. So this field trial was really an exercise in like, all right, how are we going to be able to tell if this thing works? And um, uh, the thing that we came up with was that we need to be able to count the frogs, spray them, and then go count again. And if the two counts are different, then we can say, all right, it looks like our spray is working. Last night we counted both the treatment and the, and the control plot. And in the treatment plot, we found that there were about an average of 13 frogs per um, subsection, our little 64 meter square plots. So total in the whole quarter acre, we counted about 200 frogs. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to spray. We're going to spray our pesticide tonight. and. Um, uh, like I said, we had two plots. One is treatment where we're going to spray our pesticide and the other is a control plot where we're just going to be spraying water. So what we need to know is, are the frogs moving because we are simply moving through the area or is it really because of our spray? So what that means is we need to have a, a place where we're going to sp spray our pesticide and we also need a place where we're only going to spray water. So it's going to be like a, a pretend, pretend treatment. So, so that way we can tell, is it just us moving through the area or is it really the treatment? Tomorrow night we come back and count and what we're hoping to see is that there are less frogs tomorrow night than there were last night because then that shows that uh, our pesticide is working and we killed some frogs tonight. <laughs> so that's what we're hoping to see. When we come back two weeks later and count again, the counts are still low. So that suggests that we are killing frogs. So in the knowledge that every living thing in a natural community such as we're standing in um, is connected with each other and that the fate 
of the plants and the microbes in the soil, the birds of the sky and the insects that are crawling and flying about are all connected. Um, this kind of connectiveness comes naturally in Hawaiian thought and the idea that the land and sea are connected goes way back to the, to the chant of creation, the kumulipo. 